Hello everybody, welcome back. We are right back to where we left off with, which isn't very, you know, uh, far into the third act. However, I have no idea what we were doing, so let's just find something and start doing it. So we have the last straw on the loose. Uh, okay, I gotta go find Meredith and turn that in. So that's probably what we'll start with. We have Faith and Justice, and Faith is Sebastian's, Justice is Anders. We have the mine that to do. We'll definitely do that this week. We have Gamelin's Greatest Treasure. Okay. Um, Murder of Crows. And then who needs rescuing and lost swords? I think we have actually a sword. Do, does that show up in our inventory? I don't think it does. I remember that from the last time. I was just like looking for it, but definitely doesn't do anything. Uh, all of these say they're pretty good. Like that. But I remember this looking retarded. Yep. Okay, well. I think we should just move on. Ooh, what's this? Gosh, it's just like... Ah, things everywhere. That that ring. That ring is good. It, I think it's better than the Onyx ring. Let's drag that in. Did my DPS go up? Crap, what was it? 165 and 548. 576. What about that one? 550. But... 580. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so we're just gonna go. <laughs> Enough of messing with my inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, where are we going? We were going to the gallows. We had to go talk to Meredith. Man, I don't even remember what happened in the previous episodes. We did Fenris, his uh, sister thing. You've been going where... for days. Your face is going to get stuck that way. My face is the least of my concerns right now. That's because you don't have to look at it. If you could see it from this angle, Blondie, it'd be at least a close second on your priority list. Hmm. Okay. He must be brooding. Uh, speaking of brooding, yeah, we did Fenris's little mission there and we found out that his sister set up a trap she wanted to become a magister and he was all angry about that so we definitely did that and we did some other companion stuff uh, as well but we didn't really get super freaking far <clears throat> into the third act we got, we got a lot done but we didn't get really far we just got a lot of the side stuff done i'm led to believe that both huan and evelina are dead unfortunate but necessary Emile de Lancet, however, turned himself in. Rather happily, I might add. I would have had him executed immediately. But the boy's father made an impassioned appeal on his behalf. What say you, champion? Do you believe Emile to be dangerous? Uh, <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> he was never a danger to anyone but himself. Very well. Emile will keep his life. Though I will watch him closely. I'm pleased to have played a part in keeping the city safe. Yeah. Wait. That's it. Pay us and send us on our way. Hey. Not a single thought given to the fact that you Templars brought all of this upon yourselves. Gosh, we need to deal with him Be right very now. Be careful, mage. Your friendship with the champion protects you only so much. Yeah, Anders, shut up. This is not the time, Anders. If not now, when? Uh, at the end of the game. We do what we think is best for this city, mage. That is all we can do. I bid you good day, champion. Ah, coffee. So good. Okay, so we got that quest done. What were we going to do next? We could do, um... We could do the mine. A small prom. Talk to Varric. Okay, we could probably go do that real quick. And... Under increasing Templar pressure, more mages are turning to blood magic with devastating consequences. Be alert for uh, letters from both the Knight Commander and the First Enchanter. Stay involved. Okay. Oh, before I talk about my coffee, which is an important note, uh, not the coffee this itself. This is the home of Kirkwall's Circle of Magi. I have been stationed here since I was 15. I like how Anders was just walking into him. Anders, the temp he's a Templar. He's going to capture you. Uh, oh, cheer up, Blondie. You're making me cry just looking at you. Don't. You made a mistake. It happens. I almost killed a girl. 
You've killed 254 by my last count. Plus about 500 men, a few dozen giant spiders, and at least two demons. It's not the same. Why? Because this one you feel bad about? Maybe that's the problem. You know, I'm just gonna point out that, uh, that was like an old story that they were talking about? What the heck? Come on, guys. Obviously I have to catch up on things to say that you have in your scripting. <clears throat> I don't remember what I was gonna say before the coffee. But I do remember now what I was going to say about the coffee. So let's talk about that, right? So finally, right? The best time of the year is when kids go back to school. Am I right? Oh, it's so good. And why is this so good? Because typically I have to record at night, like late at night, like 12 o'clock a.m. to like one or two. That's typically the time I have to do it because, the you know, my buddy's kids, the guy who runs our website, Excelsius. Uh, love his kids and everything, but they're freaking loud, you know, it's, it's really annoying, so I can't record during the day because of that, and uh, instead I kind of, you know, have to always constantly be pushing it back further and further, because sometimes I'll go to bed really late, but school's back in town, or school's back in play, school's back, school is back in session, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say, it's, it, look, it's early, that's all I'm saying, because they're, Back in school, I get to record early, which is why I've got a huge thing of coffee. Uh, you should see it. It's a bucket. And I also am super tired, so if things don't make sense, that's why. Also, is Meryl living with me now? Meryl? I have Ooh, business in the squares. I hope there's no trouble from it. Isabella's here, too. Seems everyone wants something, don't they? Oh. Meryl? No, I'm starting to think Sander is watching me. I think she is living with me. Isabella? What the heck? Nope, Meryl. I'm so confused. <laughs> she was just there in the foreground. Is everything all right? Guess what? Castillon's in town, and I'm not waiting around for him to stick a knife in my vitals. We're going to get him before he gets me. Okay. We're going to surprise Castillon. I love surprises. Unfortunately, Castillon's holed up somewhere in Kirkwall. I haven't been able to find him. I do know where Velasco is, however. That's his right hand. We just have to make him tell us where Castillon is. Somehow. Uh, somehow? So, you're saying <coughs> you don't have a plan? I have something of a plan. Step one, we go to Velasco. Step two, something exciting happens. Step three, profit. Well, do you have a better idea? Uh... <laughs> I don't know if she'll like that, but, I mean, it's going to work, right? Castillon wants you. Why not let Velasco bring you to him? And you follow me. Ooh, that's clever. Oh, she did like it. I was going to suggest challenging Velasco to a riddle game and making Where's Your Boss one of the riddles. This is so much better. <laughs> uh, I've got to point out, when it zoomed down on me, I was wearing fabulous shoes. Just have to say that. I'm ready whenever you are. Velasco's been spending his nights at the brothel, enjoying its many splendors. That's where we'll find him. Okay. We'll make sure we do that. Look at those look at those shoes. Just look look at them. They are. They are a thing of beauty. They are. Okay, writing desk. What do we have here? Uh, apparently we had something. From the desk of Knight Commander Meredith. Uh Expresses her gratitude for services rendered. Please accept this token of her humble appreciation. Red. Message from the really French name. <laughs> Thank you for persuading Emil to do the right thing. The boy has not recognized it, but yeah, okay, cool. Best served cold. Uh, it took great courage the other day for you to speak openly against our knight commander. Who is this? Oh, this is first enchanter. Uh, you have my support in any actions you take. I hope I have yours as well, for there is a situation in the circle I was hoping you could assist me with. Please meet me at the gallows. Meredith has confined my mages to their cells and forbade me from traveling further than the courtyard. I appreciate your service and discretion. Okay, uh, Knight Captain Colin says, as a, as a courtesy for your past service, be aware that I have received complaints about your frequent companion, Guard Captain Aveline. She is accused of coddling her men, really, and weakening law enforcement uh, in the crucial time, in this crucial time. In the absence of a Viscount, I am called to vacate 
her position and assume her authority, but I would rather not have that headache. Please speak with her about these claims. Okay. And then, King Alistair, please meet me in the keep. <sighs> oh, crap. What have I done? Uh, uh, sure. Oh, no. What? I didn't mean to. What? I, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, so, you remember... From Origins, I made Alistair King, right? That's no, you know, crazy thing that happened. I mean, most most people who do Origins make him king. But why is he calling me? Why does he want me? That's not good. That's like, uh, you know, when you're in, speaking of school, again, like when you're in middle school, high school, any school, and they're... They do, they do that whole thing when you get called to the office. You know, like they call up the teacher and they're like, hey, will you send so-and-so to the office? And they're like, hey, you need to go to the office. And then everybody in the class goes, ooh, ooh, somebody's in trouble. And it's like because you left your lunch at home, your parents brought it by or something. Like it's nothing important. But, uh, well, I guess that is important to have food. But you know what I mean. Who do we want to bring to see Alistair? Well, I mean... Oh, this is kind of tough. Probably a dwarf. Uh, we know dwarves are good. We should probably bring the guard captain just to impress him. And then um, Meryl, because she looks fabulous. I mean, that makes sense, right? We don't want to bring Anders to see Alistair. That would be a bad idea. Fact. A uh, really bad idea. Then again, bringing a blood mage probably isn't the best idea either. either. Let me guess. That's your final answer? Three mages have fled to Ferelden, and you have intervened to protect them, as if it is your right to do so. What other answer did you expect, your majesty? A maybe might have been nice. I do not deal in maybes. I deal in cold, hard facts, as should you. Perhaps when Ferelden next chooses a king, it will be one that takes his duty to the Maker seriously. Back off, woman. Jeez. Well... That was awkward. Oh, don't mind her. That's just Meredith's idea of Kirkwall hospitality. Really? Kirkwall brutality? You must rip the skin off your face, then. <laughs> this is the champion of Kirkwall. Right, I'm Alistair. Oh, uh, uh, King of Ferelden. And this is Tegan, my uncle. Sort of. I'm actually Tegan. I'm only sort of his uncle. <laughs> your Majesty. May That's awesome. I say... What an honor it is to meet you. Evelyn, you're embarrassing. Well, you could, but you'd be the first today. I fought at Ostagar. What happened there was a great tragedy. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes, it was. Thankfully, the man responsible has paid for that. I was hoping we could talk. Would have been better timing before being emasculated by Meredith, but I'm not picky. I just realized something I should have brought. Oh, what am I thinking? I should have brought Isabella. I should have brought as about because you never know what kind of things they might uh, exchange as far as words go. Because you know, in Origins, you do meet Isabella, so it may you know uh, have some type of thing going on there where they say something. I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna leave that for your guys' playthrough. When you play through Dragon Age Two, inevitably, you should bring Isabella along. See what he says. She says as well, uh, because it might be. Quite funny. Okay, what he said. He said, I was hoping to talk. It would have been better time before being emasculated by Meredith, but I'm not picky. You know about me? Um, let's be, let's be, like, you know, funny with him because we, you know, we know how he is. Things are looking up. It's not often I get called on to meet with foreign leaders. I know you came here from Lothering, a Ferelden refugee that did well for himself against all odds. I have to admit, I was hoping your influence in Kirkwall might be of use. Things haven't been going well with Orlay. Without a Viscount here, however, there's only the Knight Commander to deal with. Uh, I could be Viscount now. How can I help? Do you really think there's something I can do? Sadly, it may be too late. 
Meredith got wind of my arrival sooner than I'd hoped. What you can do is protect Kirkwall. It will take someone like you to keep it from falling apart. That's a big responsibility. Just me standing between the city and disaster, huh? I've been there. Trust me, it isn't pretty. <laughs> well, I suppose we should be getting back. We should. The hero of Ferelden should be back in Denerim by now. That's our guy. You're always so formal. He has a name, you know. You know, about that whole hero of Ferelden being back in... Uh, Ferelden... Uh, or Denerim, that actually is not the case, because uh, as I've said before, at the end of Awakening, which is the Origins expansion, I went through the mirror, so my character, we have no, actually, maybe this takes place, this part of the story takes place before he goes through the mirror. There we go, that's the way to explain it, because I go through the mirror, and then he's gone, I don't, Aveline, you know, he's not anywhere. What do you mean? In your mirror? What do you see? A warrior? A wife? All the mistakes I made to get here and make it right. Why? What have you decided to see? Sometimes it's hard to tell. Cracks, mostly. <laughs> Maybe I'll borrow yours sometime. If that's all right. It's all right. You too. Aww. Okay, let's uh, Hello, suck to Aveline. to the barracks. I never tire of it. Well, you're not going to be happy with this one. You have no Viscount. It's clear you're suffering without sufficient leadership. That doesn't grant default authority to you or your commander. It would be easier if you cooperated. Wouldn't it? Guard, Captain. Trouble? Yes. He's been hounding me. These Templars strut around as it is, but now it's just out of hand. He could be fishing for a less strenuous position here in the barracks. Well, he won't be getting one from me. <laughs> That's not what Callan has heard. What are you talking about? You're apparently a lazy bone. Uh, now, let's, uh, let's say unfounded accusations. That you coddle your men. It's all lies, of course. But it's out there. No wonder the lieutenant was harassing me. Bastards. If they think I'm coddling anyone, it'll be my husband, Donick. You and I will intercept his patrol tonight. Then you can see for yourself if I'm coddling him. Or any in my command. Uh, you don't need to really convince me. I don't have to see proof. I already believe you. Of course you do. But nobody questions my leadership without a response. Cullum wants to know if these things are true. You'll be able to tell him. Donick's patrol, Hawk. Me and you, tonight. Okay. Accuse me of being soft. Not in this lifetime. Right, okay, so... Wow, he just disappeared out of thin air. He's a mage! I knew it! He's not really a Templar. He's an abomination. <sighs> oh, that's the other thing. <laughs> that's what I was going to say earlier before I started talking about school. Uh, <laughs> I you can't you can't do these things to me. You really you just can't. Uh when when you tell me like quit quit saying they're going blood mage. They're going abomination is what it really is because they're not going blood mage. It's the it's it's you can't do that thing to me because I'm I'm gonna I'm now going to perpetually say that just to anger people. I I that guy, you can't do that. <laughs> so if you want me to stop saying something, don't mention it. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep saying it. You, you brought this upon yourselves. That's all I'm saying. Speaking of Blood Mage. Letheline, I need to ask you for a favor. I thought the Arulin home would be the last thing I needed, but the Illuvian still won't work. I think... I think I have to go back to the... spirit that helped me at the start of all this. Uh... You mean the demon. You want me to help you summon a demon? No, no, I'd never ask you to do that. I've called to the spirit, but he doesn't seem to hear. He was sealed in an artifact on Sundermount. I have to look for him there. But if things go wrong, if he possesses me, I need you to strike me down. You need to, you need to back up and rethink this whole situation, girl. 
You would risk becoming an abomination for this mirror. How is it worth that? Marvin, Hun, you of all people should understand. I would gladly sacrifice my life to help my people. There's no one else I trust. Please, Marvin, Hun. I don't want to go into this alone. <sighs> Whatever. If you're determined to do this, then I'll come with you to make sure nothing goes wrong. Ah, Saranus. You've no idea what a relief that is. The demon is sealed in a cave on Sundermount. The sooner we get this over with, the better. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll do that. But first, we probably want to kill some dragons, maybe? Shoot, actually, let's go Let's go pick this quest up. This is the quest from the, the mage, and he will tell us inevitably that, that we need to go do something. Yanka? There's a story behind everything, Daisy. So tell me. I can't. Why not? There was a girl, and I made a promise. Bianca is the only story I can never tell. You can't say that. Now I want to know even more. <laughs> that was the idea, Daisy.